Marianne Blake's new course called Activity Pages from Images landed earlier this week and to those of you on my newsletter list you will have heard uh, the basics of it from me already. And for those who have no clue how to get started with Activity Pages this is a really good place to begin. She uses mostly free software. Uh, you can pay more for it if you wish, but in the main, you can get started for free and build as you go. So what am I actually talking about? Well, the trend for activity pages for kids and adults isn't going anywhere anytime soon. And there's absolutely no reason why you can't jump on this ever expanding bandwagon and join the party. And in a minute, I will explain in more detail a couple of easy ways you can do this. Now, if you've not been here before, my name's Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables, and I create videos for this channel based on low content publishing and printables for Etsy or similar platforms, and tips for using the Affinity Suite to achieve that. And if that kind of thing interests you, then click on the subscribe button and the notification bell, so you'll be notified when I upload new videos like this. And if you find this video helpful, then please do click on the like button, which will help this video get seen and help me grow this channel. I really do appreciate it. So the first thing I want to show you is the types of activity niches that Marianne covers in her course. She starts out by showing you the very good reasons why it's worth creating activity books in the first place and gives you PDF crib sheets that you can download and refer back to. And there are a number of very good reasons why, as a digital product creator, you should consider creating mid-content books for selling on different platforms. And one of those top reasons is the fact that these particular products are high on the repeat purchase list. Once the activities are done, they need new ones to start again. So they either print or buy the same book. Kids get bored doing the same thing over and over. So buying new ones becomes the norm for parents. Hence, an unlimited supply is needed. Enter the digital creator, you. There is more, of course, to it than that, and Marianne explains it all, but at the heart, repeat sales and high demand are the best possible reasons for creating products in this niche. So, on to the different types of activities. I'm going to start with the dot to dot pages, although Marianne does that further down in her course. But I'm going to cover this in more depth here using designer so I can show you uh, a couple of tricks that I discovered along the way. So here I am in Affinity Designer and this is version two. And I'm setting up um, a new page to use to create a design on. Having set the size to letter uh, or US size, I'm then going to set up the page with dots and numbers. And it will become clear why I'm doing this first as we go through this. So first of all, I've created a shape, uh, a circle shape. And now I'm creating a text box with the basic number in. and I've changed the color of the dot to black. I've made it quite a reasonable size because we are talking about dot to dot images for children, not for adults here. And I've made it a, a bigger number than just a one because it's easier to copy down. And I take the extra numbers out as I go. And I'm setting them up so the spacing between the numbers and the dots is just about right. So I don't have to mess about with it later. And to change the numbers, I just click on each one, I highlight it and then over type. And I'm setting these particular ones so they are a right hand justified. So they are in line with the dots. And later on, you'll see I set up another set which are left hand justified and I put the numbers to the right hand side of the dots because you will need to use both types. So 
So I've used the align tool to set all the numbers up so that they are in line with each other. And rather than just creating each one separately, I've copied down a whole batch and I'm just going to change the numbers on them. So I'll speed this process up because it's exactly the same for the whole lot. And when I've finished all of one section, then I'll click back in and just show you the next part that I do. So now I've created up to 100 numbers, which I would think would be enough even for an adult dot to dot image. And you don't have to use them all, of course, but if they're already set up, it does save you having to stop and create more if you did need them. And now I'm going to add a second artboard in here so that I can create another set which will be um, left-hand justified, but the numbers to the right of the dots. Uh, this is a very straightforward process. You go up to the artboard section tool, the artboard tool on the left-hand side, and simply draw another artboard to fit the text and the dots and then duplicate that artboard and now you have effectively two pages within designer it's one of the aspects i really like about designer it doesn't you can do the same thing in illustrator but i think designer is just a little bit simpler And then I've duplicated the whole set of numbers from the left to the right, or from artboard one to artboard two. And now I'm going to go through and select all the dots and move them to the left-hand side of the numbers and left-hand justify the number characters. Very simple to do. And you only really need to lit, to move um, the first one across and then you've got the space to move the, the dots across further along. Now, if all this seems long winded, trust me, it will save you a lot of time later on if dot to dot pictures are your preferred choice for activity books. And here you can see I'm just selecting all of the dots in one hit. And then I will move them to the left in one go. So there we go there. You now have one page on the left with dots to the right and one page on the right with dots to the left, if that makes sense. And you'll see that as you go through setting up different images and we'll do one in designer as well, that you'll there'll be times when you'll need a dot and a number on the left hand side of the line and times when you need a dot and a number to the right. There's also going to be the awkward time when you're going to need one to the top or the bottom and those you will have to manually manipulate. But the odd one or two of those is nothing compared to setting all of this up from scratch or creating a number and a dot at every single point on an outline. I will provide you with this file if you have bought Marianne's course through my link uh, so you don't have to draw all this yourself. Bear in mind too that this process can be repeated in any program. You can do the same in Illustrator, you can do the same in Inkscape, you can do the same in PowerPoint, you can even do it in Publisher. So you're not confined to Designer, but the file I supply will be a Designer file. I've actually gone ahead and set up the rest of the dots for above and below the numbers is it just seemed a sensible thing to do so the whole file will come with all four sets of dots and numbers and as I say if you um, bought the course from Marianne you will get this file as a bonus and if you haven't but you'd like to get hold of it you can find it on my Etsy shop and I will leave the link for it down below. Okay now this video is going to be a bit longer than usual because I have been playing around with the AI mid journey and um, the, the discord feature that it uses to create images 
based on another product which is from the desk of Alessandro Zamboni and Andreas Quintana. You've probably heard of them. They've brought out several courses in the past and Alessandro has spent a great deal of time diving into artificial intelligence in the last year, probably longer than that from what I've read. This particular course interested me because having gone through Marianne's course, I thought, well, that's all very well, but you've still got to create uh, the initial images and she does cover where you can get a hold of a lot of those very easily. But this is even faster. Now, you don't have to buy this course. You can go and get into Mid Journey and Discord yourself and work out how to do it. But I have to say for what little price this cost, this course costs, it saved me huge amounts of time on figuring out what I should be putting in as prompts, what I should be getting out of it once I put the prompts in. And the whole course covers a great deal more than that as well. These are some of the images that they've been getting. And I'll show you the ones that I've created just initially, which I want to use for um, some of the dot to dot and activity pages that I've gone through with Marianne. So if I just click across to mid journey, these are the initial images I got just following the basic prompts that Alessandro talks you through for putting in. And it's a very simple process to set everything up within Discord and mid journey. If you follow exactly what he says, if you've not done any of it before, you'll be absolutely fine. If I can do it, I'm sure everybody else can. So these were the initial images. I had this in mind as a, a series for uh, activity pages. And I thought they would be, um, at least the simple ones, ideal to use in the dot to dot section because they have simple lines down the sides. Uh, and I think you'll agree that uh, as an initial attempt, they're not bad. And then I got a little bit more um, experimental because I have this thing about dragons and these started coming up as well. Now you can get colored versions as well as black and white, but I wanted black and white line images for what I was doing. And my reason for showing you this section out of Alessandro and um, Andreas's course is because uh, it just speeds up the whole collection process for the images. You can find them, you can research, you can pick stuff out, but you've got to spend time cleaning up images. And these just came through so quickly and easily that I just think it's not worth the hassle. You know, you can just uh, ask AI for almost anything and have it within seconds virtually. Right, so let's quickly run through how I would use one of the images that I've pulled out of Mid Journey into uh, a designer ready to add a dotted line to. But first of all, we have to create an outline. And although the image was originally an outlined image, it was a JPEG, not a vector image, which is what we need to do this. And unfortunately, designer still doesn't do an auto trace like Illustrator or Inkscape. And Inkscape is still by far the quickest and easiest way to produce this. So we'll go to uh, Inkscape and I'll just quickly run through how you would convert this uh, JPEG image to a vector image that you can use for activity pages. So having pulled the image in, we will go to path, trace bitmap, and most of these you can leave pretty much as they are. And if you've bought Marion's course, she goes into more detail as to why, but you can leave that as it is and click apply, which will effectively take a copy, but as an outline, as you can see. So we'll now delete the, the background, which we don't need. And I'll pull that image across and then I will save that. Now to save, you have to export. And initially you need to save it uh, to a different location. Otherwise it'll overwrite your original file. To do that, you'll go file, save as, and place it wherever you need it to go. So I will call this two 
and then when I export it, which is what we need to do for an SVG, you can say export selected only, and down here you will press export, and it, it sometimes will come up and tell you that it already exists. And then we come down here and export. Now we don't want it as a PNG, we need it as um, a plain SVG. So we click on that and then we click export and it'll tell you it's already there because it's already saved it, but that's fine. So we're going to replace that. And then when I go into a designer, I'll have this image, which I'll delete and start again. But I'll be able to pull that one in. So we go open and we go dog one. There we go. And I'll just make that bigger by holding down control to maintain scale and just making it slightly bigger. Now, here is something that you will come across a lot if you use this method for pulling in lined drawings. And that is that the trace that we did in Inkscape has traced around the outside of these lines. And I will show you that by clicking on the node tool. And if I zoom in, you can see that we have the shape, which is the lines. It's not necessarily a problem for this particular thing because we're going to replace part of this with dots for the dot to dot. But it could be if you want to manipulate any of these lines to change the um, whole t style of the drawing, maybe. If you do a lot of this, you'll get used to it. but. Just be aware that that can happen if you pull in lined drawings and you wonder why when you click on it, you end up getting expanded images. OK, now as a simple child's image for dot to dot, I'm going to replace some of this outer section of the cape with dots. So the first thing I'm going to do is to take the opacity down so that I can lay the dots over the top and see what I'm doing. And I've selected it and I come across here to the right hand side and turn down the opacity so that the whole image becomes a very faint grey. OK. The next thing I'm going to do is go across to my dot to dot numbers file and choose a selection of the numbers to pull in ready to put around. So most of the ones I can see I'm going to want will come along the top. So I'll take it from the bottom section because I want the, the dots to come along at the bottom with the numbers at the top. So I'm going to copy that first group of 10 and paste it onto this page. Now they're quite big, so I need to scale them down a bit. So hold down control and just shrink it down to the sort of size of dots and numbers that you're happy with. And I'm going to ungroup, control shift G ungroups that group. And then you can just pick up each of the ones that you want to pull across and follow the line. I'll make that bigger, it'll be easier to get hold of. Now you can see the value of having these numbers and dots set up ready to just pull across rather than having to create them every time you create an image. And I can probably spread these out a wee bit more. just so they fit more along the line. OK, and you can carry on down around if you wished. Um, I'll do a few more of those, but I'll, I'll come back when they're done. 
So there's a few more added in, and here's a classic example of what I said where you're never going to have um, all the dots fitting exactly as you wanted because these numbers are all slightly off the place I need them. But that's easy to move a few rather than having to move a lot. And I don't need all of those, so I can just delete them. So the next thing is that um, all of these are now on top of the image which I need to manipulate. So I'm going to group all of the numbers and the dots by coming across to the right hand side here where it's layers. I clicked on the first one and run down to the bottom and click on the last one. And you can see it's grouped all of the dots and the numbers and press Ctrl G and they're now in a group. Now I can turn that group off so that I don't upset the positioning of any of the dots. And what I want to do is delete this part of that line. Now if I was in photo, I could just literally erase it. Now if you have the whole affinity suite, you can be in photo, which will make this much easier. Um, you can flip through to the pixel persona, which is effectively Affinity Photo. Click on the erase put tool to the left hand side here and just choose the brush and delete the part of the line you don't want. How simple is that? Okay. Turn the numbered layer back on by clicking on the dot and hey presto, there's all your dots come back in. Now I've missed a little bit of the line, so I will go back and just take that bit off. You need to be on the path. So make sure you're on the image layer. Take a bit more off. Turn the numbers back on to make sure they are OK. And I managed to delete part of the number. So the control Z to put it back. There we go. Right, turn the numbers off, click on the path and just delete that little bit. That's better. OK, so we have the top part of the cape as dots and the rest of it in place. Go back to the affinity uh, persona, designer persona, sorry. And let's zoom out so you can see that a bit better. How quick and easy was that? And I did that really slowly because I was showing you how to fit things in. But if you are au fait with how to use this program enough and it's not difficult to do those couple of bits, then that would be a really simple process. OK, so the question somebody's bound to ask is, OK, well, what happens if you don't have Affinity Photo? You've only got Designer. So you can do the same thing. Uh, you cannot obviously erase it as you would if you could nip into photo and use the erase brush. You'd have to do it by choosing the nodes. So this is the vector version of the image. And if I turn on the node tool, you can see we have all the nodes around the outside of the lines. So I'll make those bigger so we can see what we're doing. And what we need to do is break the path along which these nodes flow. So the first thing is to mark where you want your line to start. And if I just move that one up a bit. And I'm going to choose the break curve tool in the top context toolbar, which is just here. And you'll see it, it highlights it in red. So if I click on that one, it should break the path. And give me a gap. So if I now click on the opposite side. And again, break it. And then I need to join the two ends of the previous bit. So we need the join button, which is join curves. And there you can see we have a break now in the line. We do the same at the other end. 
So we click on the line, press the break curve. Uh, to make this easier to see, I have taken the fill off these lines because it is a fill, a shape, and just blown it up so you can see the nodes. And I'll take that down again so you can see um, what we're doing here. This section, um, before I double checked it by zooming right in, uh, I hadn't actually this end, I hadn't closed properly because sometimes you can't see where the nodes are connected. So it pays to zoom right in and make life easy for yourself so you can see what you're doing. So here we need to do exactly the same thing and connect these two end nodes and close the curve. And you can pull them down in here to make the straight line. And then zoom out, control zero, zoom straight out. And now you can see that that bit is isolated and you can delete it quite safely. And if we put the fill back on, you can now see that the outline no longer has that bit around the cape. If I turn on the duplicate, By clicking on the toggle visibility, you can see the opacitated line show up through. So now you can place your dots in exactly the same fashion around that faded line and then simply turn off that bottom layer. So that's how you would do it if you don't have Affinity Photo to be able to pop through to and erase the line. Okay, if you're still with me, well done. I know this is a longer video than I normally create. And whilst I could have split it up into two or three shorter ones, I felt they would have lost some of their reference to each of the different parts that I was covering if I'd done that. So quickly getting back to the rest of the content for Marianne's course, I just want to cover some of the other activities that she mentions. Spot the odd one out is an easy one to create as you only need the one image, which is quite easy to manipulate and alter to suit the activity. She goes into quite a bit of detail with regard to scissor skills and gives you two different levels of a uh, type of production for young children, along with methods of making it very clear what they have to do. Spot the difference is another one that is quite simple to do using one image, really uh, just copying it and varying it. And find the hidden image is one that is great fun to create, I would think. Um, you can choose any type of theme for your books and create many, many pages along these lines. And remember that even if you're not producing your books in colour because they're expensive to print, you can of course produce digital files in colour which can be sold on digital platforms downloaded and printed by your customers. Other activity examples that she gives you are for cut, stick and colour where she'll go through the various details of how you create those. Simple paint by numbers and she covers how you can separate out sections, give the, the colours and how to put the numbers in. Dot markers images creation, which is something I had not heard of, but I, I do realise they are the, the big dot markers that young children use. And as she says, they're never going to be masterpieces, but it does teach children how to manipulate pens in their hand and how to differentiate colours as well as lots of variations on those themes. Well worth a look, not expensive, um, a good one to add to your arsenal for publishing books. All of the methods that she describes, although she chooses free software to use, can be done within the Affinity Suite. Everything I've shown you here in this video has been done in Affinity version 2, and there is another beta um, out on the market at the moment for I think it's 2.04 they've called it.
but so far I haven't seen anything so wildly different that if you've gotten used to using version 1 you can't find your way through version 2 very easily. Everything I've mentioned today is in the links in the description below if you want to check things out further. That's it for me. I've been Jane Willingale of Silverzone Printables. Thanks for watching. Thank you.